So in the Mosquito, there are five things for navigation. First is the knee board here. Then is the magnetic compass. Then the remote compass. Then the direction indicator. And then we have the direction finder for the radio. So first I'll go over the knee board. You open it by holding right shift and clicking K. And you can use these arrows at the bottom and um, this is a checklist here but if you go back you can see these maps so these purple circles and lines are your waypoints in the mission editor um, but the cool thing is if you if you hold right control and click k it will spawn down a little arrow um, showing where your plane is so you can see it spawned an arrow next to the zero it might be kind of hard to see um, but I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game and fly a little bit and I'll put another arrow so you can see. So you can see every time I hit right control and K, it puts a, another arrow right here to see where you are. So next I'll be going over the magnetic compass. It's kind of an uh, awkward position. It's right in front of the throttles here. It's the same one in the Spitfire. So it has this spinning piece on top. So to check, your, to check where you're going, you align the n N for north with the cross here. And once it's lined up, there's this little thing here and that will show where you're going. So I'm going about 70 degrees. And let's click, my, click on my airplane and it says 72 degrees. Um, now every time you turn and you, every time you want to check your heading, you need to realign this. Um, and let me show you something here. So let's say I want to turn. So whenever you uh, turn, you don't want to check your heading when you're turning because the cross is not going to be accurate. You need to level the plane out first, and then you need to ch wait for the cross to level out, like you can see it's going right now. And then once it's leveled out, you can check your heading. So the cross is leveled out. I'm going to align it now. So I'm going about 50 degrees, and let's double check, and 51 degrees. So every time you uh, check it, you need to reline the thing. Okay, that was the magnetic compass. Now the remote indicator or the, ro the remote compass. So this is a magnetic compass too. It's just, it's easier to see. The arrow just points where you're going. It also has this little uh, heading thing that you can use. So this has the same problem as the magnetic compass. Uh, when you're in a bank, it does not give accurate readings. So if I turn here, you need to level the plane out first, and then you can see now it's giving an accurate reading. Okay, now for the direction indicator. Uh, this just has numbers that tell you where you're going. And this is run off a gyroscope. So the good thing about this is that this is accurate while you're in a bank. So when I turn, you can see that the compass changes while I'm turning. Or the direction indicator changes while I'm turning. So that is better for, so the direction indicator is good because it immediately will tell you where you're going. The problem with it is since it's not connected to a compass, it's just run off a gyroscope, it can become misaligned over time. So every once in a while, you just want to double check with this compass to see where you're actually going. And if the direction indicator is not aligned right, you've got to realign it. All right, so the next thing I'll be going over is the direction finder with the radio. So on the Caucasus map, there are all these little uh, black symbols here. It's like a black net. So you can uh, fly to all those different stations. You can tune into them with the radio, and the plane will tell you where to go. Um, so I already went over how to do it in my radio video, and if you want a more in-depth explanation of the radio, you can check at that, but I'll go over it in this video too. So first you've got to go click number two on your keyboard to go to your navigator's seat, and you need to flip these two switches down to turn the radio on. Then you've got to turn around and click this button here to lower the headrest, and you've got to put this thing to standby to turn the radio on. Now you need to see where you want to fly. I want to fly to this beacon here, 335 kilohertz. So you've got to tune in your radio frequency. So I'm going to switch this, uh, switch it to the right band. So 335 is between 200 and 500. And it's the yellow band, so I'm going to dial into 335. 310, 320, 330, and 335. Next thing to keep in mind is the signal might not be that good. If you are on one of these lower bands, the black or the yellow, 
then there's an extra antenna you need to lower out of the plane. You just unclick this thing and just left click, and then you can relock it. And now the signal should be better. You can hear the Morse code pretty clear now. So I'm going to turn the volume down so I don't hear the Morse code. So what you need to do now is you need to switch this master mode into DF for direction finder. And you need to put this guy onto balance. And these needles are going to come alive. And you need, you need to make sure they're centered in the middle. If they're not, you can come over to this uh, meter balance and you can move it left and right. And you need to make sure that they are about halfway up, which they are. But if they weren't, you could come here and adjust the amplitude. You can see when I adjust the amplitude, it changes the height of the meters. So once that's done, once you've got it set up, you're going to take it into visual mode. And then you can see the meters are a little bit off to the right. That's telling me that I've got to fly a little bit right to get to my destination, which is correct. So I'm going to take the game off pause, and I'm going to fly a little bit to the right so the needles are aligned with the middle line. Whenever you get pretty close to the station, you can put it into high sensitivity mode here in order to make it more accurate. And that is how the visual direction finder works. The problem with the visual direction finder is it only works if you're already going in the general direction. If you're going, if you don't even know where it is, you have no idea. Well, you need to find, you need to go in the dire general direction first and then you turn on the visual direction finder. If you need to find the general direction, you need to use the audio direction finder, which I'll show you now. And once again, I'm going to go over it kind of quick. If you want a more in-depth video, you can watch my tutorial on the radio. So for the audio direction finder, uh, you want to do all the steps I already did. So you turn on the two power switches like I did here, and you um, put this into direction finder mode and put this on standby. Except for the, au the audio direction finder, and uh, by the way, make sure your frequency is tuned in like earlier. The only difference is that with the audio direction finding, you're going to take this, and instead of doing visual, you put it on the, on the infinity symbol. So, and you're going to turn your volume up. So what that's going to do is it's going to turn this radio on, this uh, circle thing. So what you got to do is you got to click this to unlock it. And as you spin it around, you'll notice you'll start to hear some Morse code. You might have to wait a couple seconds for it to come in from the station. I don't know if you can hear that. So what we're going to do to find the general direction is we're going to use this switch here, the oral sensing switch. So when you hear the beeping, you're going to turn this in the left and in the right. And in one direction, the noise will cut out, and in the other direction, it will be louder. Whatever direction it's louder in, let's say it's louder on the right, you're going to move this until the numbers, it's until the arrow is moving to the right. So the thing is moving to the left. So let me give you an example. That might have been kind of confusing explanation. So I'm going to wait for the beeps to play again. So you can see when the beeps played, I put it to the left and it cut out, but it got louder when I put it to the right. So I want the arrow to move right, so I'm going to move this thing left. So once you move it left a little bit, you're going to wait for the beeps and then do it again. So the same thing happened. It got louder on the right, so I need to turn the arrow right even more. So let's turn it a little bit more right. And when I, when I say turn the arrow right, like for example, you can see when I put it on the right, it got louder. So if it gets louder on the right, you turn this thing to the left. And the reason I'm saying when you, you turn the arrow right is because when you turn this thing to the left, it kind of looks like the arrow here is moving right, if that makes sense. So it's just an easy way to remember. If it's louder on the right, then you turn it so it looks like the arrow, this little arrow here, is moving right. If it's louder on the left, then you turn it so it looks like the arrow is moving left. So let me, let me listen for the beeps again. So we got to move the arrow right, so turn the thing left. Let's listen again. So this time it got louder on the left, so I need to turn the arrow a little bit left now. 
So around here, um, so basically you're going to keep doing it until you don't hear any more sound. And I don't hear anything anymore. So when you don't hear any more sound, you're going to look at what it is. For me, it's just zero. And that's how many degrees you need to add to your current direction. So for example, I am currently going 300, so I need to add zero degrees. So I need to fly 300, so I don't need to move. This was kind of a bad example because I'm already flying toward it. So let, let me turn off to the left and do it again. So let's listen for the beeps again. So on the left it cut out, and when I put it to the right it got louder. So I'm going to move the arrow to the right. So I'll just do a little bit for now. Let's do like 30 degrees and try again. Same thing. Let's move it another 30 degrees to the right. Let's try again. Same thing, let's move it to 80. So when I moved it to 80, I don't really hear anything anymore. So I need to find where what my current heading is. I'm just going to do it easily. I'm going to look in the mission editor. So my plane is heading 291 degrees. Um, so 291 plus 80 is about 370 degrees. So that is the direction I need to fly. Now in this situation, a 370 is actually more than the compass has. It's The compass only has 360. So what you do is if you get a number higher than 360, you just do minus 360. So for example, I was flying, um, what was I flying? I was flying, I'm flying 291 degrees right now. And this thing is showing me 80. So 290 plus 80 is 370. And that's over, that's over 360. So 370 minus 360 is 10. So I need, I need to fly 10 degrees. And let's see if that's accurate. So 10 degrees, as you can see, will get me about to the general direction. Now keep in mind, um, the audio method is not extremely accurate. It's usually off by a couple degrees. And that's because you're not supposed to use the audio method to fly exactly there. You're just supposed to use it to kind of figure out where you're going. So I just got, um, I know I need to go 10 degrees is around the general direction. So I'm going to turn the plane to the right till I'm going around 10 degrees. And then once you're going in the general direction, then you're supposed to switch to the visual method, which I showed you earlier. So for the visual method, you're going to put this thing back to uh, zero and you're going to lock it. And then you're going to put this thing back to visual like we had it earlier. And then you're going to, you're going to follow the arrows here. And let me turn the volume down. Then you're going to follow the arrows, and the arrows will get you accurately there. Or, or not the arrows, these little lines. Alright, so the last thing to go over with navigation is something I forgot to mention in the video. It's the beam approach. So, if you have any other World War II planes, a lot of, a lot of them have a similar a system to this beam approach system. So basically, the beam approach system is something that makes it easy to land on the runway in bad weather. So like we have... Um, so let me go to the uh, mission editor to show you. So you can see a lot of these runways have these uh, white triangles coming out. So any runway with the white triangle, you can land on it with the beam approach system. Now, unfortunately, on the World War II maps, they don't actually have these white triangles. So unfortunately, even though it's a World War II plane, you actually can't use this on a World War II map yet. And it's because some of those maps are kind of a work in progress. Um, but you can use it on any map that has these uh, white triangles. So the way that the beam approach system works is you need, to f you need to find what airport you're landing at. So let's say when I fly, I'm going to land at Kobuleti here. What you need to do is you need to find the frequency on it. It's 111.5. And then you click on your plane in the mission editor. And then you click on this uh, radio symbol here. And then you see this base frequency. You're going to put the frequency in, 111.5. You cannot change the frequency in the cockpit. You've got to do it in the mission editor. And let me go into the plane now to show you how this system works. All right, so in the cockpit, you can see the runway in front now. So you've got to turn the system on first. So you click this guy down. And the volume is right here. So I'm going to turn the volume down. So there's no visual system. It's all audio. So how this works is it tells you if you're lined up with the runway. So if you are lined up with the runway, you'll just hear a steady beep like this. 
So if you fly to, the, fly to the left of the runway, you'll hear a different beep. And let me fly to the left to show you what it sounds like. So you can hear it's a steady beep with a secondary beep. So now let me fly to the right. So you can see when you're to the right of the runway, it's just a single beep. So basically, when you are landing in bad weather, you can use that audio system to tell if you're lined up with the runway or not. That was all the navigation systems in the Mosquito. Once again, if the radio part was confusing, you can um, watch my radio video where I go in more depth. Um, and that's the end of the video. I'll see you later.